three years in Korea, and then I came up here like during college. And then, uh, but before that, I was going to an international school, but I can't remember where that comes from. Um, I love my teaching, you know, I love uh, teaching people, just um, sharing information and also seeing people's lives like impacted by our teaching, you know, like um, in this class, uh, I've taught at this university, uh, uh, this is my sixth year teaching. And I've met so many uh, people from different countries. It's so interesting. And I value each one of you because um, as a human being, anthropology is about human beings, right? I value each culture. I feel, value each person. And whatever your background is, you know, I want to get to know you. And I hope you uh, find this class meaningful. Um, and then um, I'm a single, but I dealt with a lot of kids, you know, neighbor kids, friends' kids, friends' pets. You know, like, I, uh, how many of you have done um, dog sitting? No? Cat sitting? Fish sitting? Okay, I've done all of that. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's hard, it's, it's fun. Um, and I, so, like, um, I love animals, I love traveling, and um, I love watching movies, and I just love uh, spending time with people over coffee. You guys like that? <laughs> you know? Like at a park or like at a coffee shop, you know, it's a lot of stuff. Um, just anywhere, I just like talking with people. Um, and what I hope to get out of the class is that your life being impacted, you get something meaningful out of this class. Even if it's an obligation, like, oh, you know what, I don't want to, <laughs> some of the students are like, this is one of the classes that I have to take, you know, uh, I understand that feeling. But even then, um, I hope you get something meaningful out of this. And hopefully, um, after this class, you're going to say, you know, uh, that time was worth it, you know, and the money was worth it. So I hope you um, say that. All right, so let's go around. Um, could you start? Could you? Yeah. Uh, my name is Lina Cristina. How, how do you? Lina Cristina. Lina. Okay, why don't I write this down? Yeah, because, yes. uh, you know, I, I don't want to forget your name. I'm very forgetful, by the way. I care about people, but I, I'm very forgetful. Lena, all right. So, Lena, where are you from? I'm from Indonesia. Oh, okay. Yes. How come your English is so good? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I like to watch in the movie too, so yes, yeah? improve my English. Yes. Oh wow! So, yeah. like, what are uh, what are some of the movies that you like? Uh, I would like to watch in movies. Yeah, but um, what kind of movie? Like, a, what um, what's the last movie that that you watched? The last movie is about. Uh, it's a Korean drama. Oh, it's Korean movie. drama. <laughs> <laughs> I like to watch the Netflix and the Korean drama. Oh, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Cool, cool. And uh, most of the movie is uh, from the Telegram application. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Great. Yes. And uh, because of my, from my work before, mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of uh, interacting with uh, people. Oh. Uh, not only in my country, but yeah. uh, some of the expatriates from China oh. and uh, from the other of the country as well. Wow, so you've been kind of acculturated too, like yes, people. <laughs> yeah. So um, my work before is uh, I I was graduate from the medical degree, so I work as a GP before. GP. General practitioner. Oh, is it something similar to nursing practitioner? A doctor. Oh, MP. Oh, wow, I'm really yeah. doctor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody who's sick, uh, go to Lena. <laughs> Get some shots. <laughs> and then uh, I have a family in my back in my country, but right now I'm here just by myself. I see. Yes. Is it convenient? <laughs> uh, it's not actually. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Miss my family pretty much, but um, yeah. uh, my mom is in here. He she's a, a citizen of America. Oh, good. And uh, my brother is in here as well. Oh, good. My big brother. Yeah. That's helpful. <laughs> Somebody. Yes. And um, uh, for what I hope to get out of the class is I can mm -hmm. understand a human being better than before. Yes. This class is exactly that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jeremy, the cat. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Kaito. I'm from Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to work at the uh, the, the sushi restaurant oh, good. Ooh, in Japan. Nice. 
and uh, it's my first time taking the uh, cultural anthropology class. So uh -huh. I'm just wondering like what I can learn from here. So yeah, I'm like a beginner. Okay, yeah. Uh, welcome. Yeah, uh, this is definitely a beginner, beginner's class and we're going to learn the basics and, you know, uh, terminologies and things like that. So hopefully find it useful. All right. And um, Lady Anya Gray Park, could you introduce yourself? Hi, um, my name is Carrie. Uh huh. How do you spell? K Y E R I. Okay. Uh, so, oh, it's R I. I was born in Korea. Oh, you were? Lived in Guatemala for a few years. Oh, wow. And then came to the US for college. Wow. I'm. And you say? And. Oh, I used to be in India. Oh, India. Oh. Wow. And then after graduating, I came back. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh. That's a different culture. <laughs> uh, very different. <laughs> And I'm working as e-commerce uh -huh. in a venue company. Oh wow! And single. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I like outdoor activities, going on hiking, play golf, uh -huh. or go to the gym to work out. Ooh. And um, I like to expand my knowledge and maybe apply in my future. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we'll, we'll talk about certainly like multiculturalism, diversity, and things like that. That's all applicable in our workplaces as well. You know, mm -hmm. um, we don't come from one single you know uh, nation anymore. Even in Korea or Japan or China, if you go to a company um, these days, like people are from many different countries because you know we have contractors, we hire from other countries, and so yeah, it's valuable for us to learn that. Nice to meet you, Harry. Mm -hmm. All right, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> My name is Jun. I'm from Taiwan. Taiwan? Yeah. Oh, and the world house the U.S. Mm -hmm. The English is not good spot. No, your English is fine. I'm understanding you. to meet you, June, and I uh, hope to get to know you more. All right, could you introduce yourself? My name is Shota from Japan. How do you spell? S-H-O-T-A. Okay. And I, I work as programmer. Oh, a computer programmer. Yeah, for service and Wow. And I'm single, and my hobby is Traveling. 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 Oh. And I'm starting to run. Oh, wow, running. For Honolulu Marathon. Oh, Honolulu. Wow, yeah. that's a hardcore. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think, wow. It's full, full marathon. Wow, so when is it going to be? Uh, this coming December. December, wow. Yeah. And I hope to get. Uh, theology, how it work for people. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Very right, great. Um, I uh, I volunteered for a triathlon in uh, Kona Hawaii. Oh, really? Before. Yeah, that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. All day long. Oh. And uh, yeah, there was a gentleman who actually was, um, he had only one leg. You know, he was disabled. Oh, really? And he was on, uh, you know, uh, crutches mm -hmm. and his family was just cheering. <laughs> We were all cheering because he was the last one to come in. Uh, like the sun was setting and he was just, you know, he didn't give up. Like he went through the whole thing and um, he made it like in time. And so we were like really touched. Like, if a person with one leg can actually, welcome, can actually finish the race, then um, we can do a lot of things. You know, uh, we can overcome a lot of mental disabilities. We can um, overcome physical disabilities. Uh, social disabilities, you know, um, even if we have many weaknesses, we can certainly overcome. And I was really inspired by that gentleman. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, nice. Um, so do you train every day? Like, wow. Like, uh, where, where do you go? Like, uh, fire? I go to Zim and I use treadmill. 
you know, run your hands. Oh, yeah. okay. You carry eyes on ten or twenty kilometers. Like one, uh, at, like in one running. Yes. Oh. <laughs> awesome, awesome. You're gonna have really good heart, like a strong heart, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Keep it up. <laughs> All right. Um, gentleman in the white hat cap. Uh, my name is Peter. Uh huh. I'm from Korea. Uh huh. Uh, I'm working at the bar right now. Oh, a bartending? Bar? The drinking bar. Yeah, yeah, bartending. Yeah. 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 And I'm single. My hobby is stay alone and sleeping. <laughs> okay. Yep. We gotta have some of those people, like, you can't all be active. <laughs> uh, I wanna learn something new from this class. Mm -hmm. Great. Nice to meet you, Peter. Alright, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Daniel. How do you spell? Daniel. Daniel. Also from Korea. Uh huh. Uh, I've been through the family business. Family business, okay. Can I ask, like, what kind of business it is? Uh, dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. Oh, dry cleaning, okay. Wonderful. We, we all need that. <laughs> I have, like, tons of clothes right now, you know, that I have to wash. <laughs> It's a human human need, right? Basic need. Uh, I'm single. Mm -hmm. And no, none of hobby. Just uh, I want to learn something new. Mm -hmm. Something new. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're gonna definitely be exposed to something new <laughs> that they've never known before. All right. Okay. A gentleman in gray, gray shirt. Let's see. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. <coughs> what? Would you introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, my name is Daish. How do you spell? Uh, T I A S H I. Daish? T A I. S H I. Oh, Daish. S H I? S H I. Okay, Daish. Okay. <coughs> I'm from Japan. Mm -hmm. I work as a chef. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm married. I have a three baby. Uh, home. Oh, two babies. Oh, two babies. Oh, okay. Oh, like, uh, uh, are they little? Two. Are they grown up? Two uh, babies, you two kids? How old are they? Uh, seven years old and uh, seven months. Oh, seven. <laughs> seven and seven, okay. <laughs> wow, you, you must not be sleeping very well. Yeah. <laughs> and your wife. <laughs> Great. I like uh, hiking. Mm -hmm. For now, you might need some sleep, right? <laughs> Study English. Uh -huh, you want to study English? Yeah. You know what? I brought in like a whole bunch of uh, terms, words. So hopefully, you you'll learn some something valuable. So we're gonna learn about words, like English words, anthropological terms, though. Yeah. And if you have any questions, let me know. I can explain to you what certain word means. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh, lady in black. Uh, my name is Antonella. How do you spell? It's A N T O A N E L A. Really? Yeah. Anton. A N T O A N E L A. Antonella? Yeah. Okay. Great. Where are you from? I'm from Romania. Uh huh. Um, for work, uh. Public relations consultant. Wow, fancy. Um, the fourth question I'd rather not answer. Uh, the hobby, mm -hmm. I want to call it a hobby. I would say that was my primary work. That would be a volleyball player, professional volleyball player. Volleyball? Oh, you are a pro? Yeah, but Ooh. I retired. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holly? 
interested. Uh, and as a class, I'd like to get uh, more knowledge to apply it mm -hmm. in my life. I've, um, I've been very impressed by your classes, the classes that I already took online for me. So right now I'm like, <laughs> all, I'm like <laughs> all ears. <laughs> all of your doors. <laughs> so you know me. <laughs> Uh -huh. Just they're being very educational, like very, mm -hmm. for me at least in my perspective. So. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, I'm glad that you're back, <laughs> that you're meeting in person. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Anybody who didn't go? I think it's pretty much everyone, right? Okay, great. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian. I, I believe in Jesus and this college is also Christian. So can we start with the word of prayer? That's what I do every class. Okay. I want to bless you all. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this precious class with people from different cultures and we're already enriched by each other's presence. And Father, we ask you that you will uh, be with your presence and guide us and give us wisdom. Uh, many of the students have um, a need uh, to know um, anthropology, know cultures, know people, um, because we are living in the world just full of people from different backgrounds and we work with people of different kinds and so may you give us wisdom and um, Lord um, help us uh, learn to love each other and get to know you as well and we look forward to what you're going to unfold through this class through this course we thank you and we ask you for your protection over each student from illnesses from um, any kind of um, uh, problems Lord God and give us wisdom and strength as we um, face each day we thank you in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so um, it's about I'm going to read it as okay. Now, um, let's talk about the syllabus a little bit. Um, so that you can have an idea. Um, anthropology was one of my uh, first classes that I took at you know, during college years. In my first year, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, I'm like, wow, we're coming back in full circle and I'm not now teaching it. Um, so this class is called, uh, called Cultural Anthropology. And what does that mean? Uh, what does that mean? So you know culture. I'm going to explain that to you because uh, we do come from this different culture. And um, it's anthropology. So, so, you know, psychology, sociology, you know, missiology, theology, you know, these are talking about study, study of a certain field, right? Ology. There's biology. <laughs> biology, do, do you like it? You know, the pizza house? <laughs> um, <laughs> study of pie, maybe. Um, anthropo, anthropology, this means of human beings. Oh, actually, isn't there um, like a clothing company called, like a clothing brand that's called anthropology? Yeah, I, I think I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, so of human beings. So study of human beings. So welcome to this uh, study of uh, human beings. And um, what we're going to uh, try to achieve, like uh, let's talk about course description. It's in your book. Okay, it's in your book. <clears throat> yeah, the first, first page. Course description. Um, and I'm already forgetting names.
Okay, so um, course description. Okay, so remind me your name again. I just wrote it and then I saved it, but this. So, um, um, Carrie. 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 Um, could you read course description for us? Yeah. Um, this course provides an op opportunity to explore a variety of concepts and theories under under the umbrella of <laughs> cultural anthropology. It encourages students to examine the complex interaction between individuals, social group, social structures, history, and culture, as well as to apply theoretical principles of anthropological analysis to critically interpret culture or groups. It offers tools for making sense of the experience of work with a community who might share with us similarities and differences. Mm -hmm. And continue. Through readings, lectures, discussions, and videos, students will become familiar with the concerns and perspectives of cultural anthropologists. Some of the key concepts covered in this course include culture, social structure, race, and ethnicity, identity, field of research process, research biases, diversity, and multiculturalism. Yes, that's mouthful. <laughs> and um, we're not going to be able to go in depth, but at least, you know, touch the basic level. And um, hopefully we'll learn, um, you know, touch, touch on these topics. Um, so, and thank you for reading that. And um, so by the end of the semester or quarter, right, uh, using the uh, examples encountered throughout the course, students should be able to recognize, understand, and appreciate human diversity and then develop an awareness of issues of power and inequality, right, locally and globally. So anthropology is a broad field. It covers, it encompasses many different fields, and we're going to talk about that, um, but also locally, too. And um, you'll be able to demonstrate knowledge of the methods of, of ethno ethnographic research. Yeah, so we're not going to be able to engage in research, but you're going to at least um, have an idea how the research can be done. And number four, demonstrate knowledge of how anthropologists define culture. Yeah, so culture can be defined in various ways. And then number five, demonstrate knowledge of the subfields within anthropology. Yeah, and critically evaluate popular representation of cultures and peoples around the world. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so, and then, you know, general course objectives and student outcomes, you know, uh, is at the bottom. Now, um, we are going to start talking about uh, what you know, the definition of cultural anthropology. Um, as part of what we do um, each time, um, I do brief devotion. It's uh, nourishing for your soul, you know, because uh, the material can be dry. It can be informative, but it can be dry. So um, we're going to try to uh, engage in spiritual exercises. You know, just. Uh, um, read the word of God, and then um, afterwards we're going to uh, dive into the lesson. All right. Um, although it says Nehemiah uh, 1, uh, I'm going to actually show you. A different passage. Um, I'm going to put it on the screen. So I don't have to pull that because I want to go to um, Genesis chapter one. Okay. Um,
Genesis chapter 1, and um, it's just taken as a story. It's a meaningful story. We're talking about anthropology, which is the study of human beings, right? And uh, it's talking about human beings, um, how they came to be. And so um, you, might have, uh, you might be really familiar with this, but other people might be not familiar. So we're going to just uh, uh, read through and see what happens. Um, this is the, the first book of the Bible um, in the Old Testament. So there's a uh, New Testament and Old Testament. The Old Testament was written first, and it was uh, written in Hebrew language. Yeah. And uh, later people translated that to um, Greek because um, at that time the universal language was Greek, just like we speak English as a universal language. So first it was translated into Greek, and then uh, later it was translated into many other languages like uh, Latin, you know, um, Germany, German, um, English, and you know Chinese, Korean, um, and all that. So here, um, because uh, many people put into their effort, you know, different people from different cultures put into their um, effort to translate. We have a privilege now to have access to the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So it's talking about no human beings yet, right? And it's kind of dark and formless, like there's nothing. It's like, well, you know, um, but um, it was formless and empty. And the Spirit of God was hovering over. So like the only being was uh, the triune God, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. And they were there, but no human beings, no creature, no animals, right? Yeah. Um, so let's go around and uh, go around like this, uh, reading one sentence uh, per person. So um, verse 3, Carrie, could you read this for us? Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Yeah. Let there be light, and there was light. You know, have you been in a darkness, you know, when the... Uh, Electricity just goes out, power, power out, <laughs> power outage. Uh, it's like really dark and you can't do anything. And like if it lasts for more than like seven hours, eight hours, you start losing power. You know you can't use your computer, iPad, your phone is just you know dying. Um, we've been there before, right? So uh, no energy, no power, and there's no life. Uh, so there was no life before, but God said, let there be light. Um, it's not just this kind of light, but it's talking about energy. So energy came into being. Yep. All right. Um, where did it Oh, oh, oh. Um, could you remind me your name again? Jim. Jim. Jim? Jim. Oh, no, not Jim. Um, um, Shota. 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 Um, could you read verse 4 for us? Uh, verse Number 4, four. Yeah, here. Okay. Uh, and it was so that the light was good, then he separated the light from the darkness. Yeah. Because, uh -huh. okay. Sure. Go for it. God called the light? God called the light day and the darkness night. Yeah. So uh, there was no day and night differentiation before. But now, because there was light, there was energy, there was something that is not, right? Um, say, there's love. If there's love, without love, what? Uh, no love or hatred, right? Um, if there's um, harmony, if you take out harmony, what happens? Disharmony, conflict, right? So it's just that, that contrast. Now there's life and there's light and energy. Now the contrast is absence of that, which is darkness, no energy, um, no life, right? And so God divided the light from darkness and light became day and uh, darkness became night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Yes. All right, um, I think you're Peter, right? Um, and could you read verse six for us? I can see the forest line because of the... How is too... Uh, is it too small? No, 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 because of the... The 
project. Projector, yeah. Oh, projector. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters mm -hmm. of the heavens from the water of the earth. Mm -hmm. Continue. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the water of the earth from the water of the heavens. God called the space sky. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, right? So um, it's been raining for the summer and, and even for the spring. It's very unusual because I've been living in LA for like how many years now? Uh, close to 20 years now. And um, usually the rainy season was like um, November to January. You know, and uh, now the climate is so um, weird, it's so messed up. And so like we have rain in like March, May, like anytime June. Um, but we know that um, there's water because we're surrounded by water. But one of the things that I really love about California is aside from the sunny weather, um, we're surrounded by beaches, right? Nice beach everywhere, um, like Santa Monica, Hermosa, Long Beach. Um, Palos Verdes, you know, have you been to Palos Verdes? Please do check out <laughs> Palos Verdes. And um, what else? Um, you know, many different, uh, yeah, uh, places where, where you can travel and just the uh, ocean is beautiful. So there's water on the earth, but there's also water. Did you know that uh, water is in the sky? Yeah, so that's um, why we have, uh, uh, like a precipitation, you know, like a uh, rain sometimes, you know, um, and the universe is just full of uh, molecules, right? Um, oxygen, water, um, you know, hydrogen, and other other things that um, make life possible. Yeah. So um, the bulk of the water in the upper realm is sky, and then uh, the uh, Water on Earth is called ocean, and that's how God divided up divided up the water. The evening passed, and morning came, marking the second day. Yeah. All right, um, Daniel. Yeah, could you read verse nine for us? Then God said, "Let the water." Banner the sky flowed together into the sky. Right? It was dry ground and made of clear, and that is what happened. Mm -hmm. Continue, please. God touched the dry ground, the land, the land and the water, see, and God saw that it was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's repeated here? God saw that it was good. Yeah, He's speaking the world into being, being you know, let there be light, there's light. Uh, let there be sky, there's sky, let there, let there be ocean, um, there's ocean, and there's nothing bad in it. Everything is good, yeah, because God is good, and what he creates is good. So our being really matters, right? So um, say there's a famous artist, and say Michelangelo. How many of you like Michelangelo? Um, yay. <laughs> Um, I love Michelangelo. Um, his sculptures are beautiful, just uh, incredible work, right? And um, his uh, work on the uh, chapels and uh, his painting is just amazing. Uh, Michelangelo, because, because he's a really good artist, his um, master artist, whatever he puts in, uh, his hands on, it could be a sculpture, he could, he could just you know, have a lump of clay and, you know, <laughs> squish it and then put it on the ground and then people are going to say, it's a million dollars piece of work. <laughs> Why? It's because Michelangelo, he is a uh, master artist. He's good, right? So he is so skillful and good that whatever comes uh, out of his hands is good. And the same thing. God is the master artist and he is the mastermind. And whatever he puts out there is good. And he is not narcissistic, he is objective. His objective, his objective was saying, you know what, it is good. What is out there is good. Those uh, who travel around, um, one of the places that I've been to is um, um, Australia. Um, I, I hope to hit Europe one day. I only passed through, you know, <laughs> laid over. But um, Australia was just beautiful with the cliff 
and the beautiful blue ocean and just the nature. Uh, just the awestruck, you know, I was just awestruck. Wow, somebody made this, you know, it can't just happen by chance. It's too exquisite, um, so sophisticated, and somebody, some kind of mastermind, you know, created this. And I was just like, wow, this is mind blowing. And when we see nature, we can see God's goodness. Uh, whoever created this is good. And God is objectively saying, you know what? What I create is good. It is good. And it's not contaminated. At the beginning, you know, I love fish. And, you know, some of you are sushi chef. <laughs> um, I love sushi. One thing that's really frustrating with pollution is what? Uh, you have to be very careful with um, anything these days, right? Fish or um, meat or even beans, you know, they're all polluted, unfortunately. But in the beginning, there was no pollution. Everything was organic, <laughs> everything was clean, everything was so, and my older friends who have lived here for like 40 years, 50 years, do you know what they say? The fruits and vegetables that come out of um, California are not the same anymore. They used to be fresher, crispier, they used to be so nutritious, but these days, no same level of nutrition. Like you have to eat 10 times as much in order to get the same nutrition. It's not as crispy, not tasty, even the fish. Why? Because of the pollution, uh, because of what we have done. <laughs> and I'm guilty of that. And um, I'm trying to do better with my you know, um, waste disposal and you know, trying to save uh, disposable plates and uh, trying not to create so much uh, waste. But um, it's, well, and nuclear bombs and everything, nuclear plants um, were polluted. And so things are not the same, but in the beginning, there was only goodness. Everything was fresh and healthy and good. Now, um, so God saw that it was good. Um, starting from verse 11. Um, Can we turn on the AC? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, remind me your name again. Um, you know, Dad of two children. Taishi. Taishi. Yes. Taishi. Could you please read um, verse 11 and on? Um, vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants, and trees with seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produce plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Yeah. Ooh, vegetables. I love vegetables. <laughs> and they all came into being with the seeds. And um, when I was little, I was slightly older than you, uh, when I was little, there were some inventions on the like on the newspaper. Oh, this is a breaking news! You know, somebody, uh, Dr. Wu from Korea, actually came up with seedless watermelon. He's the first one. Yeah, that was like three decades ago, right? He invented seedless watermelon, and we're like, whoa! My brother was like cheering because he he's he's a little bit lazy when it comes to he's a, he's a hard worker in other aspects, but when it comes to food, he doesn't like fish bones. He doesn't like seeds. Like, why do I have to deal with this, right? And seedless watermelon, you don't have to like even uh, get the seeds out anymore. Oh, you can just eat the whole thing. And he was really happy about that. 
So we're thankful to Dr. Wu, but the flip side of the coin is that when there's a human invention, there's always like a side effect. When God creates something, there's no side effect. But when human beings create something, there's always a side effect, even with convenience that comes with it, artificial intelligence or whatever, even the phones and social media. I love social media and that's how I connect with people. There's always a side effect, right? In social media, you're restless. Like I'm getting messages and phone calls and throughout the whole day, there's no resting time. And if I don't respond, they're like, I'm mad. <laughs> so, um, but when God created something, there was no side effect. So um, God created watermelons with seeds and that was actually good. Although it's inconvenient when we eat because when they have seeds, then they can uh, spread and there will, there will be more watermelons. These days, the farmers have a difficulty getting the right seeds. Okay, so uh, I have some uh, friends who actually do a lot of um, gardening and uh, horticulture, you know, stuff. And what they do is they try to really get some seeds, the normal seeds. Normal seeds are hard to get, you know that, right? These days, you get the seeds, you plant them, and you make all kinds of efforts, and they sprout and finally bear fruit, maybe for one time. After that first year, no more. That's the reality where we're living in. Very sad, because people, selfishly, took away, they, they did something with DNA, right? You know, uh, they re-engineered so that they will not have more seeds after one year. Yeah, I, yeah, it's horrible. But when God created something, he made it so that it will um, perpetuate, it will continue without having to do anything about it, right? So um, he created plants and seeds with seeds and he saw that it was good. All right. Um, what should yeah, we get to now? No. Oh. Oh, 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 and it's oh, yeah. Thank you for catching that. Okay, the plant produced vegetation, I think I read it, all sorts of seed bearing plants okay. and trees with seed bearing fruit, the seeds for and God saw that it was good, right? All right. And could you read uh, verse 13 for us? Oh, what you mean again? Helen. Helen, that's right. Helen, yes. And? That it may pop and money kind of uh, looking at their face. Yes, continue. The, the dog said, let the lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the light. Right? Let them be signs to make the seasons day and year. Uh, let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth, and that is what happened. Yeah. Uh, drop this to great light. Mm -hmm. The larger ones to uh, govern the day, and the smaller ones to govern the night. We also make the stars. Mm -hmm. God set this light in the sky to light the earth darken the days and nights and to separate the light so the darkness and God saw that it was good. Yeah, basically he created sun, moon, and stars. Yeah. So um, I've traveled to China before and um, it was like a rural area that I traveled and I love the people. People are so nice. Oh, I made some good friends uh, with them. Um, we had a good time just eating together, shopping together, talking together. But um, so it was like way back, like maybe 20 years ago. So now things are different, but at that time in that rural area, there was no light at the at nighttime. So no street light. So when the sun goes down, you better go to bed. <laughs> There's nothing for you to do. And I was like, whoa, without the street lights, because we're so used to street lights. I assume that there's a little bit of light even at nighttime, but not so. <laughs> and so it was pitch dark and I couldn't even see my hands. It was kind of scary. Lying down on the bed, I was like, oh, where's my hand? Where am I? Like, I lost my orientation. And um, I saw the importance of uh, sun, moon, and stars. Because without them, it's going to be really scary. Like, you won't be able to see anybody and even yourself. Um, imagine it. It's really scary. But God put the sun, moon, and stars in a place so that even at nighttime, you have some light, right? And also, um, yeah, they're, they're guiding. You know, anybody who is sailing, anybody who's traveling, they can tra um, travel by the stars, like where they're headed, right? Without the compass. Yeah, if, if you get lost, um, you can find the direction by them. And God 
saw that it was blood. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fourth day. And Antonella, would you read uh, verses uh, 20 through just on the full paragraph? Then God said that the waters formed with fish and other life, and the sky was filled with birds of every kind. So God created living sea creatures and every living thing that scurried and swarmed in the water and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. Then mm-hmm. the fish filled and let the birds multiply on the earth. Yes. Because what God creates is good. He wants to fill the earth with them. Like, he doesn't make just a few. It's like, he's an abundant God. He creates, okay, just fill the ocean, you know, fill the field, you know, livestock, you know, um, every uh, creature, and, you know, fill the sky. There are so many birds uh, of different kinds. Uh, Very interestingly, um, contrary to what evolutionists say, and there, there are different different kinds of evolutionists, right? But I'm talking about the traditional hardcore evolutionists. Um, according to their, their theory, there should be, as time passes, there should be more and more variety of different kinds of birds, different kinds of animals, different kinds of fish, right? But unfortunately, as time passes, we see extinction. Less and less number of different kinds of animals and fish and birds. So it's very interesting how it's contrary to the theory. But when God created something, he created the uh, uh, creatures at the end of the beginning, like a whole different kinds of animals and fish and birds that we're not even aware of, we've never seen. Like even, um, I, I used to watch, um, what do you call it? The, it's not National Geography, but the Animal World kind of documentary, you know? Um, I, I, I always loved uh, watching them. And uh, they talk about different variety of like, elephants, you know, lions, kangaroos, you know, uh, fish, and you know, different mammals. Uh, I was always fascinated by that. Um, but um, as time passes, you know, and, and also uh, we see like the excavation of different uh, animals that we don't see these days anymore. But in the past, they used to be complex beings. They just took. Uh, fossils. Fossil records are very helpful in terms of um, in what era, what kind of animals were. Right? And they were all there by creation of God, you know, uh, God's creating hands. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fifth day. All right. And is that your name? Uh, Kaito. 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 Could you read uh, verse uh, 24 and the whole paragraph? Then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animals, each producing offspring of the same kind, uh, livestock, mm-hmm. small animals that uh, scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened. God made all sort of wild animals, livestock, and small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind of livestock that Yes, I was talking about small animals. I, I told you that I love animals, and um, they are naturally breeding. And so, um, when God created livestock, even they're supposed to um, produce like offspring without anybody having to really make a um, big effort. Uh, it's a natural thing, so that they will multiply. And so, when God creates something, it's good, and He creates so that it continues. It uh, is sustainable. Could you read uh, 26 through uh, 28? Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will be over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animal that scurry along the ground. Mm-hmm, 27. So God created human beings in his own image in the head of God, his creation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Male and female, he created them. Yeah, great. 
Yeah, so um, then God said, let us make human beings in our image. Isn't it interesting that uh, God seems to be secular, but then he says, let us make human beings in our image. What does that mean? We talked about um, trying God. So um, Christian God, we are talking about Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they're one. It's not three people. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a complex concept. Like, I don't know how to explain, but God is one, but there are three persons in one. And they're in uh, perfect unity. There's no disagreement. Like, if you have, say, you know, I've had uh, twin friends you know, when I was in high school. And uh, they, were, they just they looked exactly the same. So I was talking with, say, you know, um, Sarah and Liz um, at different times. And I'm like, didn't I just see you one minute ago uh, downstairs? Like, oh, we're bumping into each other again. And she's like, I never saw you. <laughs> and so they were like exact uh, same twins. Mono was like got twins. And they had, both had red hair, really pale skin. They were about the same height. And their mannerisms, just, you can't tell which one is which, unless you're their, their parent. But even then, they had slightly different opinions of things. They don't always completely agree with each other. You know what I mean? Even the twins. But then God, in three persons, he's in complete unity. There's no disagreement. There's always harmony, perfect harmony. And he, um, God in three persons said, let us create human beings in our image male and female, I'm going to create a, um, so God has both male and female characteristics in himself, and he decided to kind of separate them, um, creating Adam and Eve. Do you know what, why God created, and later you'll be able to see, like if you continue reading the Bible, uh, it says, but then I'm going to just uh, give you the, the answer like right off. Um, the reason he, he created human beings is because he saw that within himself, the trying relationship is so loving. And so good, he wanted to multiply them. You know what I mean? So when God created animals, you know, other things, uh, seed bearing uh, plants, he created many because they're so good. Okay? And he saw that his loving relationship with the Trine God is so good, he wanted to make many of those. And so how see how many people are living on this earth? Is that 70 billion now? Yeah, it's a lot, right? Because God loves human beings. God loves that relationship. God is relational. Yeah. And um, during the pandemic, like, how many of you felt lonely ever? I did. Like, no, none of you felt lonely? <laughs> I've been really lonely. Uh, not, not because, well, I have friends, you know. Um, I have my family. But... Just lacking that human contact, you know, just uh, isolating myself, having to isolate myself. And you have to cover yourself up and you can't go close to other people and things like that. That was really isolating. And so um, I felt really lonely. And um, my uh, counselor friends, therapist friends, they're like, we're getting so many cases and we can't take all the clients because, you know, we're overloaded. Because people are suffering from like depression, anxiety, and you know, just loneliness. And that's how human beings are like, because you and I are created for relationship. And we've got to have some friends. We've got to have some kind of meaningful context. You know, um, what is research? I mean, there are many research, uh, research studies out there. Um, if you don't have meaningful context with at least five people a day, you are susceptible to dementia. You know what I mean? Like the older people get dementia, right? And um, if they have uh, enough uh, friends that they talk to and you know just uh, eat out with, you know, do something together, right? Um, and you can just, just uh, talk over the phone too. But if you have five of those people each day, um, you are not likely to have dementia. But then um, lacking social relationship, which I'm susceptible to, like we all are, so we need to be careful. Because you know, I, I know that um, many of you have like work life. You know, many of you have families. And you have to study, and you can be very busy and feel like you don't have time. I sometimes feel like that too. Like my life is really busy too. I have like multiple responsibilities. Like I have to take care of my mom, I have to take care of my my own life, and other things. And in the midst of that, it's like social life can be lost. <coughs> but if we do that, um, then our um, mental health and even physical health um, are affected by that. So. 
I would encourage you to like, uh, not just, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just good to have meaningful relationship and context and everything. Yeah. And so God created human beings for a relationship because like he wanted to love, he wanted to bless. Um, it's hard for us to put up, and maybe if you're parents, you understand this better. When you see your children, it's like, oh, you know what? Um, although sometimes they can cause trouble too, <laughs> but they're your joy, right? They're meaningful. Uh, one day you'll appreciate, oh, you know what? I'm glad I had three kids. Oh, I wish I had more kids. You know, some of my friends are talking about that. And because you have that bonding, you have that relationship, um, it's enriching, it's really valuable, and you cannot just dismiss or uh, disconnect or just abandon. Uh, I mean, we're living in a problem world. There are parents who do have kids, but it's normal, normal. You would not abandon your kids because you value that relationship. It's very special, and God treats us as very special. He gave birth to all of us. He created all of us. You know, he planned everything. Um, I used to think of myself as one of the statistics because there are 70 billion people when I was growing up, 50 billion. Um, there are so many of them. God will not know each person. That's what, what I used to think. But you know what? If you get to know God through the Bible, in your prayers, in your personal encounters with God, you'll find out that each of you has been planned by God, handmade. If you go to a store, you know, um, there are some like bags or like, you know, some, some goods that are handmade. You know, there's no second, like there's no other same kind of product because you made it specifically. And each one is unique and it it's treated specially, right? Handmade. Each one of you are handmade by God. And I want you to see value in yourself. Okay. It doesn't matter what other people say or even the media say. We're going to talk about media um, in the near future, how they portray different groups of people differently. It does not matter what the news says, what the media says, what other people say in your life. And there might have been some people who spoke um, into your life, some um, things that are really discouraging. You know, you're not valuable, you're not smart enough, you're not, uh, you're not strong enough, you're not uh, good enough, for whatever reasons. And I've heard that too. But I want you to know that God thinks of you very specially, and he created you fearfully, wonderfully, uniquely. You're a handmade. And so know that you're very valued and cherished. And then... God blessed them and said, he created Adam and Eve and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. So when it says govern it, it's not talking about tyranny. It's talking about taking good care of your creation. So um, God is almighty. He can take care of everything like without help, but he doesn't need help. He's almighty. But he created human beings and he wanted the human beings take good care of his creation. So here's my creation. Come on, Adam and Eve. And you know, human beings say, come after it. Take good care of my creation. Because you are my children. I trust you. I entrust it to your care. My creation. So when we look at the world, we um, need to understand that um, it was created by God with thoughts and plans. And we are given the responsibility to take good care of it. The earth, right? The earth and all the things that are here. And how often we mindlessly uh, mistreat them or overlook or don't care. Yeah? Uh, sometimes it could be overwhelming. You know, the way we watch the news, there are so many disasters going on, you know, like the wars and famines and, you know, natural disasters. And sometimes we get overwhelmed, like, can't possibly help all these people. But you know what? One thing that you do, say, when you watch TV, uh, something bad happens in one area, like there's shooting or something like that, your little brief prayer is being received by God. 
um, little money that you have that you send as um, uh, offering of help, uh, that makes a change, makes a difference. Um, sending some goods, you know, for the disaster stricken area for like school kids and things like that. Little things that you do all matter. It changes something in the atmosphere. It changes something and it, it um, creates positive energy where more people are drawn to do good, to take good care of the earth and creation. And so know that little things that you do actually matter. And God said, look, I have given you, my kids, every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I gave, I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry around the world, uh, ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. So feel free to just eat from the trees, fruits, you know, uh, everything that I have given you as for, uh, for food. There will be no starvation, there's no poverty, no poor people on this earth. That's how God designed the earth originally, right? And God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the sixth day. Yeah. So that's part of the story, and we're going to continue on next time. But let's dive into um, anthropology a little bit. I'm going to show you a little video to help you stay awake and uh, try to answer some questions. I'm going to write down questions. discussion for now. your adjustment to a new culture? Uh, what helped you? Adjust to new culture. Okay, and then uh, what did you learn in the process? you divide up into four groups of three. Okay? So maybe one to three, one to three, one to three, one to three. Or, or you can talk about 
but I mean, some of you actually lived in like three different countries. We can talk about those too. Um, so, any differences that you notice? It's really diverse mm. in here. Yeah, in California especially, yes. Yeah. Can you close the door so far? Yeah, what else? Can the McDonald's taste worse here? Which one? Oh, McDonald's? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it actually, it actually tastes better in China? Yeah, it tastes better. Oh. Like more crispy and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't think you know, the whole people usually take the McDonald's and KFC, the people told me. Yeah. Oh, McDonald's is so popular in China and they are like like top one or two best you know, fast food restaurant in China. Oh, is it right? Yeah. But it tastes horrible, so I'm like, nah. <laughs> I only take like a Oops. normal ice cream cone. Uh -huh. Yeah. <clears throat> On that note, because you said about food, the food here, it's just terrible in general. <laughs> Everything is terrible. Like, it tastes so different. Uh -huh. At least I'm from Europe. And mm -hmm. everything tastes so different. Here, even the bread is sweet, the water is sweet, everything is sweet here. I don't know if somebody knows it, but it's just, everything is, it, the food is just, in my opinion, my, yeah. my perspective, well, maybe yeah. other people have different perspectives. I'm pretty sure that there are many other people who agree, agree with you. Because the food is uh, something that hits you immediately, like, you know, you arrived yesterday, and then this morning you have breakfast, and the food hits you, oh, I'm in a different country. This tastes really different. Yeah. And and let me be honest, I think food is horrible <laughs> in general. That's what how I felt too. I came out here like in college and yeah, I was just I was fascinated by the culture, but also at the same time it was like, oh I, I started making like homemade food because you know, I, I could bear with like restaurant food. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Oh, oh, so differences. We're oh. still talking about differences. Well, I think in the U.S., strangers you just casually talk to each other. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. definitely different than Asian culture. We're more reserved, and mm -hmm. I'm partially Americanized. You know, I, I lived here long enough, and so um, I had to learn my way. You know, my high school friends, because I went to an international school, and my high school friends were fixing me. Why are you so different? You know, <laughs> act like us. You're one of us. You, you know, like in college and on, like when you're adults, like people recognize, oh, we're we're, we're not going to be the same, right? But back in high school, I think people still think that way. Yeah, we can be the same. Why are you not acting like an American? You know, so like my friends were actually fixing me. <laughs> so I, I think I became partially Americanized. But you're right. You know, definitely. Um, I think it might be. Similar. I can't speak for European countries, but then <coughs> I think you might be a little more reserved until you open up. You know, there's a different degree of openness, right? You know, and it takes time and, you know, encounters, repeated encounters in order to open up yourself, right? I mean, in a small group like this, I think you can't just talk about anything, but then to make friends, I think it's a different story. Yeah. And but at the same time, what I've noticed, at least about Korean culture, is that once you trust, start trusting each other, by the way, compared to like uh, Japanese culture, I think Korean culture is more open and they're more like easily inviting people. And so like, once you're invited to someone's house and have dinner together, you're like friends now, right? <laughs> that makes a difference. But then there's a varying degree of openness, yeah. And it comes with time, I mean, there's no shortcut. Um, in American culture, they would talk to each other very easily, and they can even help you. Like I was helped so many times. But at the same time, are you really a friend just because you're talking to each other? Yeah, I don't know. No. Yeah. So yeah, there's still a difference. So that's a cultural difference, right? Um, I think at least for Asians, if you talk to each other that intimately you probably have a certain degree of trust relationship. So it openness and trust kind of go together. Mm -hmm. But then in American culture, what I see is you can talk to anybody, you can help anybody, but that's just for that moment. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily friends, you know what I mean? So I, I think that may be. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, just because the eyes, yeah. they kind of try to not make it awkward. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think Americans are generally very friendly. Mm -hmm. 
and that's really helpful. Yeah, but then it doesn't mean that they come to find anything in sync or stay in sync. Yeah, what else? What other differences? I think they're more time sensitive. Uh, Americans are more, uh, uh, maybe Europeans are strictest, and then the Americans, maybe, and then the Asians. And then the Asians, and um, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, and things are changing, right? Um, Asians in general, I think they're a little more lax with time. So, like, uh, there was a study, like, because you know, I study skeleton anthropology. Um, so some research studies that, that were done. And so how long can you wait, you know? Uh, so like the most lax was, I'm not being racist, this is research study, okay? African Americans were mo uh, most lax. So, okay, and, and uh, Arabic. So, okay, let's meet at the market uh, this afternoon. So they don't even specify. I'm not talking about the entire country. I'm not talking about like business people. I'm talking about just, I'm, 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 I'm being very general, uh, generalized uh, in my statement. But okay, let's meet at the market, you know, such and such market uh, this afternoon. Then um, it means as long as you show up that day, it doesn't matter evening, three o'clock, one o'clock, like you, you get the appointment, you know, you showed up. So that's how it's treated. But then uh, in America, you better not do that. <laughs> um, maybe five minutes. Five minutes is okay. 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 We'll wait for five minutes. Oh, uh, you're not coming in. Uh, Ten minutes past if you didn't come. Oh, I'll just go away. Five. Right. Uh, I think Asians can be a little more lax. Like we, well, depending on the relationship too. If you're friends, you would wait for a longer. But then uh, if, you're, if you have a business relationship, you better be. But, um, so I think Asians are a little more lax with time compared to Americans. But then not like African Americans or Arabics because if you show up like two, five hours later, um, they're not gonna be there, right? <laughs> yeah, so I think there's a dif uh, difference in um, how sensitive you're uh, about time. What other differences? So what I've heard is that Americans, they live to work versus Europeans that they work to live. Oh, oh that's kind of sad. <laughs> well, live to work? <laughs> well, here in America, that's what it's, uh, it's been promoted based in a TV show. They were saying that Americans, they live to work mm. and then versus the Europeans that they take things a little bit easier and they work to live. They enjoy their time more. They they in their lunch breaks they go out they go full out and i mean they get together it's um they take life a little bit easier than yeah. here i feel like here everything is work 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 oh yeah very little space right and in my work experience from here it's mm -hmm. that kind of proved the exact point i'm trying to say it's yeah. it's definitely more work 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 yeah if we can just talk to each other a little bit and you know um so, so i guess it's a general atmosphere if you're talking to your co-workers and you know uh you're not working then somebody can actually make a comment your supervisor can come and say well you're not working what are you doing you know yeah. <laughs> What's going on here, right? versus if you uh, of course it depends on the um, situation i mean if, if something is really urgent and you're talking that's not appropriate but we're talking about generally right? Right. Yeah. Uh, throughout the day. You can talk with your coworkers. You can have a little bit of space for your customers. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm with you. In this culture, it's not very encouraged. Um, yeah, but you're right. Um, a little bit of enrichment, a few minutes a day, you know, I think that can be really helpful um, for your life and for other people's lives. Yeah. So then, um, Antonella, could you share some wisdom like that? How can you, uh, what, what might be an example of working to live? Um, how would you do things? Uh, draw boundaries. Like for example, um, what I've noticed here, um, 
people, they don't know what boundaries are. They, like their employers or their business partners, they text people, like they text their other business partners, like after like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So, and people, because they really want to prove themselves to prove their work so they can continue working mm -hmm. for the company or whatever they work for the project, they do answer those times instead of, drawing a boundary and saying, okay, after eight o'clock, I'm not available, I'm staying with my family. And it's, it's tough because I did it. And the, the, the employer, by that time, he was shocked, but I, I stand tall and I stand strong and I'm, this is, this is me. So you want to work with me? I know my work, I know my value. If you don't see it, I'm out. But this is my boundary. It's like after eight o'clock, I'm not answering my phone. Um, this is like an example, you know, people can draw boundaries mm -hmm. or like even like talk about their personal lives at work. Mm -hmm. That's another boundary you can set and you can say I'd rather not talk about it because those like small, small information about you can put you in danger to other co-workers. It can become a vulnerability for mm -hmm. other situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can be attacked later on. You never know who's right. gonna. Sure. Yeah. Right. Like drawing boundaries, being yeah. more integral. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Not just then, like at the time when your employer says, "Oh no, you have to answer after working hours," mm -hmm. or or also like texting you on a day where you're off. Mm -hmm. Like for me, that's completely off mm -hmm. <laughs> page. Like you cannot do that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if people they don't get the point, then there are gonna be other people who's gonna they're gonna see your value and appreciate mm -hmm. your boundaries. So it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. This is my perspective. Yeah, yeah, that's really why. And I'm just thinking about myself, like so I've been doing that, you know, like <laughs> like in countries. <laughs> and not because I wanted to make myself more valuable, but I guess hmm. I, I'll not have to, to upset, maybe. I don't know what your what your reason was, but like trying to trying to finish the the day's workload. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot. Uh, but anyway, um, I'll I'll put my thought into it. Like I'm a big fan of drawing boundaries, but um, it reminds me that what what you're saying is reminding me of how I've been doing um, work, which is probably why I'm so tired and. Um, not have enough space when other people need me because you don't have the boundaries you're, you're always texting and you know doing something you don't have that space yeah i didn't think about that thank you yeah um how about the similarities were, were there any similarities when you came to the united states and, and by the way california is kind of a unique place can't say this is america representative you know like yeah, if you go to like Indiana, someone is from Indiana, right? Oh, oh you're from Indiana. Uh, Indiana is a little more American. Very American compared to California. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the people are just white. Oh, yeah. yeah. So for them, um, like the monkey imagery, they really think my appearance is very different. You really stand out. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, so coming here felt like it was like a mix of yeah. my home country. And yeah. So even within the U.S., depending on which state you are, it's also a little different. Mm. There was one time, just because of my appearance, you know, uh, back in high school, I went to a store and there was a cashier lady. And I was just putting my items on the counter and um, she put my uh, uh, loaf of bread uh, carefully in a bag saying, we Americans care about our customers. And I was like, Okay, so I'm an American, I was born here. Uh, so like, just because of your, your appearance, you know, she assumed that I was from a different country, which I am, but then she just assumed that I, you must not be, you know, a citizen. Like, we are Americans and you're not an American. That was very clear to me. So like, those things happen to me a lot. Um, yeah, and I, 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 so how long did you live there? Mm, for four years. Four years is a long time. But thankfully, uh, the school that I go to is very international, so we think the campus, there's a lot of students from different countries. Mm -hmm. So it's just off campus that I feel that I'm like outside. Yeah. A little, uh, very interesting. 
understand that. Yeah. So like uh, I guess you know. Um, being a student is really helpful because you know you can get help. Like I, I was helped a lot by international student optics, although I'm not an international, you know, by definition, because I lived overseas for a long time and this this was not where my original home. Um, I was helped by ISO a lot, and that was really helpful. You know, just to find housing, to get furniture, to get a ride, that was initially very helpful. Yeah. So, um, what are some of the similarities that you found out when you came to the United States? People are doing both the same, hard working and working hard. <laughs> People are working hard uh, in general. I guess it's a generational thing. Some people say, um, you know, that we are living in a technologically and medically advanced society. And I agree, you know, uh, but then I wonder if our happiness level has improved. Um, even with all the convenience, and I, I, I cannot live without the phone, you know, I cannot live without certain technology, but then um, we're busier. And um, the research studies show that my parents' generation, only one person had to work to make a living for the whole family. But these days, both parents have to be up for work. How is that an improvement? You know, like, <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. So, and, and uh, we're living in a global, so I'm, I'm just talking about the negative things, and I'm pretty sure there are some good things too. We're living in a global era, and, you know, we are communicating and trading and doing all things together uh, as a globe. And so even the African countries, African countries uh, tend to be more laid back. They do not have to, they don't have to clock in, clock out. They are not worried about boundaries. If there are any boundary issues, it's like anybody can go to anybody else's home and that's probably about the only issue. But uh, because advanced societies, including Korea, you know, Korea is an advanced society too, um, America, you know, Europe, Asian countries, advanced countries actually have been going to Africa to benefit from their natural resources or manpower and things like that. We're making them busy. You, you see that? Yeah, little children are employed like a child labor. You know, they're out there, like, I heard that, um, my, my friend was like calling me like very emotional one day. Don't uh, upgrade your phone. Because whenever you upgrade your phones, there's like a little chip or something that has to be changed and they throw it out and then they, they you know, whenever you get a new phone, there's a new chip. You know how that's made? Child labor, um, African ch children. Um, they work to death, like I don't know, 12 hours a day or something. Just mining for certain uh, materials so that they can make chips for the phones. So don't upgrade your phones. And she was like, she was like in tears. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I don't, I don't upgrade my phone very easily, very often. I, I use it for like a few years. But you know, like the pressure is like, oh, your phone's so outdated. They, they, the old phones don't do certain functions, right? And they're like giving you a dirty look. <laughs> oh, get a new phone, buddy. You know, like <laughs> upgrade your phone. Uh, they're gonna do a free exchange. I guess it's not a, it's not good for the earth. It's not good for African children. Um, so certain things that we do, taking for granted, uh, are affecting other side of the world. Um, and so technological advancement and medical advancement, they are helpful, but we also have to think about the side effects. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. So what helped you to adjust? It's a fun part. <laughs> what helps you teach us? Making connections with new people. New people. How did you make connections? Um, awesome. Well, it was within the school, so mm -hmm. it was kind of easy so we can get to work in groups with other students. Yeah. Or talking to the school staff or professors. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a totally completely new place, mm -hmm. I think get the information from people who used to live there, like mm -hmm. who are moving there, mm -hmm. than just you trying to study. <laughs> yeah. Did you have 
to make that space, to make, make that time mm -hmm. to put yourself out there, yeah. get to know people, build your relationship. Make it fun. Yeah. How about other people? Like, um, if you came here not as a student, or only, you know, spent a few, a few years being a student, but uh, more in workplaces or other, like, you know, other situations brought you here, um, what helped you to adjust? You hang out with the local people, mm -hmm. the people from here, mm -hmm. and then you speak. How do you find those people? Uh, you go to club, or <laughs> maybe you just go out, or maybe social media mm -hmm. might work. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, you, you connect with uh, through social media and the cyberspace first, and then later you actually meet in person. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, um, I've seen like a hiking groups and things like that on social media, and um, you actually connect online first, right? And then later you actually meet in person to do things together. I guess that happens. Yeah. What else? Sure, uh, understanding culture, but you know, just uh, adjusting to the new environment in general. Sometimes, I, you know, it was really helpful for me to just uh, sit down, um, be myself, uh, not have to adjust so much. Be like, I'm gonna just be myself. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, but I didn't Yeah, I'm like. Yeah, I can adjust when I, when I go out when I need to, but you know, there, there's some, some downtime, I think. I don't have to speak the foreign language, I don't have to adjust so much, but I, I am who I am, right? And make that space for yourself, like just relax, you don't have to do anything. Uh, you can make it surround yourself with people who are uh, more similar to yourself, every once in a while, yeah? Just to, ooh, you know? <laughs> I can have some kimchi with my friends, you know, like, uh, or you know, one. yeah, you're, you're uh, what, what is one of the famous uh, Romanian dish? Um, more famous, I think they're cabbage, the cabbage rolls. Cabbage rolls. Mm -hmm. Well, I think most of the countries have them, but there are different versions of them. Uh -huh. Is that like a wrap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like meat is that, well, I'm vegan, but I do substitute meat. I cook it, but. The point is that I agree that we are all a beautiful individual, you know, even if we move to another country, it doesn't mean we have to adjust to their culture, mm -hmm. like to um, just to be integrated, you know. Mm -hmm. I believe you can be your own individual even in other cultures. Mm -hmm. um, so me personally, I didn't have to stand out mm -hmm. to other people trying to comply to their liking, you know, like mm -hmm. what do they want, what do they like most, let me be that person, like, oh no, <laughs> it's gonna be me, and mm -hmm. the most beautiful is just be yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and like American culture has a lot to learn from Asian culture as well, you know, so why don't you add something to your culture instead mm -hmm. of you trying to adjust to the American Yeah. A lot of people they're gonna respect. I think a lot of people they're gonna respect. Um, yeah, if you bring something new into their culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yes. like they also like here in the United States, mm -hmm. like when you want to grow a family, mm -hmm. like you have to consider the other cultures here. So my core belief is growing a culture together mm -hmm. instead of like bringing. From different culture, like your culture, my culture, and I know let's grow a culture together. Let's like mm -hmm. do our own culture, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's successful marriage. I think. It's, yeah. It's fine. Yeah, marriage is definitely you know, two different cultures coming together. Yeah. And without so, one of my uh, um, family ministry uh, professors in the past actually said that you know because. Uh, traditional uh, wedding ceremony actually has this part where um, bride and groom actually bring their candles and they light the third candle together and get their uh, and she was saying yeah without um, 
pulling out the other candles, you just keep all three of them together. Like you're each individual, but also at the same time because you're married, you're one entity, and so like um, you you allow that space. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing. And uh, time's almost up, but uh, we've got to cover some materials, right? <laughs> so, um, although what we have been doing is very valuable. So, I'm going to just briefly go over. We talked about the fact that anthropology is a broad field, and so it encompasses archaeology, bioanthropology, linguistic anthropology social cultural anthropology. And so social cultural anthropology is um, um, it's social anthropology and cultural anthropology together, right? And um, it focuses on the study of society and culture while often interested in cultural diversity and universalism. Yeah, so um, if you talk about history a little bit, 1920s and to, through 50s, Alfred Redcliffe Brown, um, we, we want to talk about some big names, right? Uh, Meyer Forbes, Edward Evans Pritchard, Cloud Lissy uh, Strauss. 60s and 90s, um, we went through a lot of wars, right? Uh, we went through, right before that, we went through two world wars. Um, there was in, uh, imperialism, industrialization, and um, now people were becoming more um, academic, and so um, more PhDs and you know uh, MA programs came out, and so um, they kind of uh, influenced um, the study of anthropology. To be very brief, and 2000 to present, so the methods have changed, the approach, like how they do the research study, have changed, and we're facing globalization, neo globalization. Capitalism, and then uh, definitely 2008 global financial crisis affected the entire world, and now uh, COVID. COVID has changed the world too, right? Mm. So uh, methodologies, traditional research, participant observation. We're going to talk about participant observation later on. I, I was going to show you a video, but maybe we can do it later. Monographs and hypothesis. Hypothesis is what you're just assuming that this is true. And then a uh, certain thing is true. And then based on that assumption, you do your research, either to prove or disprove. If it's disproved, you, you need to change your hypothesis, right? Yeah, so I was going to show you a video, but um, because of the time, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna honor your time. And so uh, we're gonna show Margaret Mead next time. And there are certain anthropological terms, which I am also going to have to skip. Uh, maybe I'll show you. What it is like. Yeah. Acculturation is a process by which a culture is transformed due to the massive adoption of culture traits from another society. It is what happens to a culture when alien traits diffuse in a large scale. So we, what we, partially what we talked about, like how did you adjust? We're talking about adjustment, right? Acculturation is adjustment. Yeah. And what is actual behavior? So anthropology is a study of human beings, you know, their culture, history, uh, behaviors, um, how they behave as individuals and groups. Uh, they're all part of the city. What is actual behavior? What people really do in their lives rather than what they think they're doing or what they believe they should be doing. Yeah, so there's a difference between like, oh, this is what we believe in, this is my culture, oh, this is what we should be doing. You know, there, there are certain things like that. But then how we actually behave, um, that's called actual behavior. So um, there are some um, important words that we're gonna study, but uh, today I'm gonna, I think we covered a lot um, and I'm gonna just, uh, uh, wrap up and um, just uh, continue on next time. So let's start with that. Let's uh, finish with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time of um, uh, getting to know what anthropology is and also getting to know each other. Lord, uh, may you continue to give us wisdom and strength and guide us 
uh, throughout the quarter. And may you bless each person as they go out um, uh, back, their, back, uh, back to their family or whatever they might be doing throughout the week. Uh, Lord, may you guide them and uh, keep us safe until we meet again next time. We thank you, Lord, and bless you. All right, so good to have you all.